Good morning and welcome. This is Cheche, the show where opinion counts, live on Citizen TV. I'm your host, Udwa Kamimo. The race for who will be Nairobi's next governor is a heated one, partly because the county is the capital of the country. It accounts for half of the country's wealth, and so it's a big deal to run the capital. Nairobi Governor Evans Kidero is campaigning for re-election on an ODM ticket, and he is our guest on Cheche today. As always, we have the panel of Mutegin Jiao and Charles Odiambo, both of Royal Media Services. Good morning and welcome. Um, so your campaign slogan is Tano Tena. Tena. But when you came into office, you promised a better life and a better Nairobi um, for all of us living in Nairobi. How do you think you've done with that promise? Mm. First of all, Doc, uh, good morning you and you, 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 your great uh, team and uh, good morning uh, Nairobi. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, Doc, as you were said when I came in, I promised better Nairobi. And um, there were several things uh, supporting the better Nairobi. Uh, really the first one is um, over the years a lot of Nairobians have felt kind of disenfranchised. They never felt they were part of the city administration and there's a bit of a big history to that because um, uh, City Hall never represented the face of Kenya. So they never felt they were part and parcel of, um, of whatever was happening at City Hall. And one of my promises was uh, better intra-ethnic relations. And the first thing I had to do was to make sure that the face of Kenya was in Nairobi. And that's why when I appointed my team, uh, uh, you, uh, the, executive my team, the executive team and the chief officer's team, um, we saw the face from Turkana to Taita, from uh, Kisi to Moyale. I would say, I mean, I got um, a Turkana minister, I got um, a minister from, uh, a CEC from Moyale, my CEC for finance was uh, from Taita, my CEC for environment. You're making the point, you're, 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 you're going down the seven pillars, yes. and you started with the seven, which yeah. is inter-ethnic. Yeah, inter-ethnic relations. relations. And that gave people <coughs> a feeling of, uh, a feeling of uh, uh, representation. Uh, in, um, in the executive. <laughs> and we've seen, I mean, unlike, mean, unlike the previous years, uh, you've seen the last one and a half years, we've not had any running street uh, battles or people demonstrating because, I mean, they've got avenues, they can come and talk, uh, they, 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 they are listened to, and their issues are, uh, are, uh, are, uh, are resolved. Let me just check with them, two long-time residents of Nairobi that I know very well. Otegi, first of all, you live in, Ni well, you have lived in Nairobi, yes. you've covered um, Nairobi, um, and you've seen, you know, different administrations come and go. Um, <coughs> you've heard the governor talk about what he's, you know, the, some of the changes he's made. Do they make any difference to, to you? Do you see anything changing? He has only talked about one thing inter-ethnic uh, accommodation, which I think is entitled to. But my question is, if that happens, will you, uh, will you get better services? Because you have appointed a Turkana and a Meru and a Kisi. Is that, is that, how, to, is that how to sort out the matter? Actually, Udo, when we were starting the show, I, I expected that you would ask Mutegi and I, Mutegi as a former resident of the county and, and myself as a resident. I'm not asking you. <laughs> That should we give Kidero another five years? I'll ask you that later. That was not the question. <laughs> you know. Anyway, as far as uh, inter-ethnic inter relations are concerned, f from what we see in his executive, it, it's, it's out there. We have people from virtually all corners of the county. But I would love to hear what is done about the other six pillars before we talk about Kidero Tema. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Right. So you've got six pillars to go. But let me remind you of the promises you made. Um, within the first 100 days. You said you would get the garbage out of the city streets and its residential districts. How have you done? Uh, when we got in, um, <coughs> and I know people have problems when I mention numbers, uh, um, I hope you take your own complaint about because uh, um, I think... Well, you can talk about numbers and yes. you can uh, verify yes. them. We, uh, uh, we produce, uh, Nairobians, the uh, four and a uh, half million Nairobians to produce, uh, 2.2 to 2.2 uh, thousand three hundred to thousand four hundred tons of garbage a day. We 
uh, when we got in, we were only collecting 300 tons because there were only 13 lorries uh, that was doing uh, the, 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 that was collecting garbage. Uh, we bought. We now have um, over 90 lorries, uh, which are working. We contracted private uh, garbage uh, uh, collectors. We now uh, collect um, uh, 2,000. Uh, we wanted. Uh, we, we, we passed. Uh, uh, the, the solid waste management uh, um, law uh, and that uh, needed to bring in because you know we have the private garbage collectors who are not regulated they collect garbage and the dump collect garbage and dump but uh, they quickly went to court and stopped us so they are uh, from our our contracted garbage collectors and uh, ourselves we collect uh, over 2000 uh, the only problem we still have is <coughs> the unregulated garbage collectors who dump, but we still do collect. But they dump in the landfills. No, they don't. Don't mm. dump in the landfills. They dump fields. anywhere. Because I mean, uh, uh, the, what they do is uh, uh, is cheaper for them uh, not to travel uh, long distances. So, given that the pledge was getting the garbage out of the city streets and its residential districts, um, can you confidently tell us that there is no garbage within the Nairobi um, city centre? Garbage collection is a continuous process because. Uh, everybody produces half a kilo of garbage every day, so it's produced and it's collected, it's produced and it's collected. And if there's a delay, if we fail to collect even a day, uh, they, they will, the garbage will pile up. So yes, I mean, we are getting garbage, but it keeps on being collected. So then you failed, <coughs> excuse me on that promise, haven't you? No, of course not. You I haven't know. failed. Yeah. Okay, you're yeah. well traveled. Yeah. Um, so you know that if you were to go to certain cities, certain countries, take for instance Singapore, you would not see garbage anywhere. Right? And that is the pledge you made, that there will be no garbage in Nairobi's uh, um, city center, in its uh, residential areas. We have garbage. You said you'd get it out within 100 days, so therefore you failed. No, no, I haven't, because uh, it's a two-stage process. One, the generators of garbage. I mean, I'm sure when you drive along, uh, when, when you're driving, uh, somebody has chucked a packet of chips onto your windscreen. Or a bottle that of certainly is true, but how is that my problem? You <laughs> are the governor of Nairobi. Uh, but there's responsibility of the people who generate garbage. I mean, take it and put it in a place where it can be collected. Uh, I think Do we have citizens laws finding have people who live Of course, of course. Do we, we enforce those Of course, laws? we have. But uh, getting people to be responsible doesn't need to... You don't have to, you don't have to arrest, uh, arrest uh, people. People just need to know that it is responsible to dispose garbage responsibly. Governor, in a way, this, in a this, statement is, this statement is verbatim. Yeah. You will get rid of garbage from within the city and the residential areas within a hundred days. Now, you are telling us this has not been possible because of other factors. Five years down the line. Did you consider these factors before you made this promise? Okay. And her question then, actually is, yeah. have you delivered on this promise or not? The other factors notwithstanding. Um, I didn't know the dynamics then, but I know the dynamics now. <laughs> and I am, okay, it's delayed, but I am getting rid of garbage. I'm removing more garbage than was ever removed. So you have failed, you have not <laughs> achieved this. Uh, what, 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 what date would you give yourself sorry? on garbage? Eight. eight. Seven, eight. eight. <laughs> there was a move by the Japanese JICA yeah. to assist the city government in that matter. And I've seen reports that they, they said you are, you are not cooperative. Why is that? Two things, you know, the, the JICA, the part and parcel that who, the, the, we did with them, the, the solid waste management uh, strategy. And uh, what was required, what they wanted was removal of, um, of the dump site from where it is at the moment. And uh, Ruai was identified as a place uh, that has not been implemented because of potential um, uh, bad strikes, mm -hmm. uh, because it's along the flight um, flight path. Uh, flight path. Mm -hmm. So as much as um, as much as Dandora is more or less full, and that was one one of the things which was agreed, is it was not possible. So we are working on the next strategy, and uh, we have partners. We are we are um, uh, going to build a twenty uh, two hundred seventy million euro. Um, uh, recirculation uh, plant um, 
we have the title, we've subdiv subdivided the place, um, the, the construction is going to start within the next uh, six months, so there'll be no need to move the, um, to the, move dump, site. Uh, the dump site because okay. we are doing um, uh, a 27 billion um, uh, shilling um, uh, uh, recycla uh, recycling plant. That's this the next promise. Uh, no, no, that's, bill, that's, that's 27 billion. Okay. Is it from uh, the taxpayers' money? Is it no, uh, no, no. It's from uh, strategic uh, partners. Strategic partner, strategic investors. And we said it was going to start in the next six months. You probably will not be a governor. Oh, no, I will be. <laughs> why do you think I won't be? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm asking to be given time yeah. to finish some of the projects I've started. And we'll, and the we'll construction of this plant. We'll come to that. Yeah. Your next promise, restoring order and the traffic flow in Nairobi and human traffic on CBD streets. The you knew how you know how traffic was. The first, the first thing we've done is we've taken off uh, all eight ton trucks. They no longer pass through the CB, CBD. Uh, either they deliver at night or, uh, uh, use the bypass. or use the bypass, either the eastern northern bypass or uh, the southern bypass. And uh, I mean, you'll accept uh, that there is a uh, traffic flow uh, better than it was before. We, t we tried, I mean, we tried no, to... No, Mutegi doesn't accept that. You know, I have a post office box at uh, Tomboy Street. Why? Because I, I used to work for Nation. I cannot access that post office box in a car. Or the buses, from wherever they come from, from the, 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 the Moy Avenue has been stolen by buses. They are parked there every day. Oh, you can't get there. You cannot get to Tomboy Street in a car. You, uh, we'll take it in the first place. Why do you need a post office box? You receive all you should receive all your mail. Well, it is there through through through, through email. It, it, uh, unfortunately, it is there. Yeah. Can I access that box? Yeah. Uh, the first place, you have no business going to the post office. You should um, uh, being in the electronic age, you should get all your mail uh, through your. But uh, the, the second thing, uh, the, the, the second thing, is that there is traffic movement. Uh, I know that uh, you must be you must you must be talking about um, uh, the Matatu issues, but we have uh, our Ascaris who keep the traffic from moving. Kojamos, Kojamos traffic moving from Kojamos to that area to the Mental House. That place is blocked. My uh, uh, it is blocked by buses. Go uh, there from here. Go there. To I have to admit it's it's a bit easier now to drive along Uhuru Highway, but that is all. The rest of the places, no. it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Exactly. There's this stage right in front of Tomboya Post Office. That's a gridlock. You can never move through there. There's this place that's just behind the bus. Right, that's why my post office That's is. a gridlock. You can never move there. You can there. move. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, panelists, how would you grade him, the governor, on the um, restoration of traffic? For me? <coughs> Four over ten. Four over ten? Horrible. I don't drive what in Nairobi anymore. You don't drive? Maybe, maybe three. Three? How would you grade yourself on traffic? Oh, six. Six. <laughs> yeah. wow. You're so generous. <laughs> You're very generous with yourself. You did that with so We will hear from all of you. I would love to really know what is the real challenge. The other time, I don't know whether it was a PR stunt or something, you walked from, uh, was it town all the way to Westlands? And we expected that now that he's suffered the wrath, we should see action. What's really the challenge? You know we have about 30,000 uh, public service vehicles in Nairobi. And the first thing I did was to outlaw the eight-seater uh, matatus, which are 16, uh, which are 17,000. And if you would replace the eight-seater matatus uh, with um, uh, 51 uh, seaters, then obviously we'd be only be talking about a third of the vehicles. But you remember when the president was meeting the meeting the matatu uh, the matatu team. At KICC, yeah, in 2014, you remember he made an executive order that uh, the 14 seater matatus must send. Of course, I think he must have been thinking about uh, about um, about uh, elections and um, and uh, votes. So, uh, if we had gotten rid, and that was our plan, and we made such an order, and in one sweep of a stroke, the president uh, uh, reversed it.
Is that the sole problem? Because you, 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 you made a big deal about these new traffic lights, right? And we saw mm. them, and I believe when we were piloting them, there was some you know, horrendous traffic. People were stuck in traffic for three to five hours. And when you drive in Nairobi, you still see traffic police officers ordering traffic. Yeah. Why did we spend money? No, I mean, uh, I must say there's conflict. You know, because what is the conflict? Is, the conflict is traffic is controlled by um, uh, traffic uh, management under the, uh, under the Schedule 4 is with the county government. But <coughs> in the position of um, I, 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 the uh, traffic laws, the, the enforcement of traffic laws is with the uh, traffic police, is with the national police. And uh, it's just been impossible to get them. When, you'll recall one of the days when I said in so many weeks we were going to uh, get, get rid of them. They deliberately cost at a gridlock, and you remember traffic could not move till uh, till midnight. We tried to get the police out, and you know the reason why police have refused to move. But even your traffic marshals are not any different from police. All they want is money. What What do you mean? No, that's uh, that's not because our tra our our traffic marshals direct traffic. They do not arrest offenders. And they have uh, once. Uh, uh, they do not arrest offenders, but the traffic police not only direct traffic. But they also, and certain times you find, I mean, they, they stop uh, st right in the middle of, of a roundabout. So until such a time that um, uh, we, uh, we work with the, the national government so that traffic police are removed, then we'll be able to execute our money. So what happens to the money spent then on these uh, new traffic systems? Was that wasted? What, where are we on that? No, they still work, but uh, there is quite a lot of interference, uh, human interference. We are not letting uh, we are not letting technology work mm -hmm. the way Mutegi doesn't st hasn't stopped going to the post office. So, so once again, Governor, you made a commitment to make movement easy in Nairobi, but you did not understand the underlying factors. But now I do. Now you do. Then you didn't. Yeah. You made a commitment without understanding the underlying factors. No, I thought I understood the theoretical bit, but I did not know the underlying conflict of interest uh, driven by factors, certain factors. Charles, I'll ask yep. you to hold that thought um, and we will um, uh, revisit it when we come back to the Karibu uh, Tena. What um, about um, decongesting? Uh, hold on. There were, there were several yeah. hundred no, no, from no, even that one, not about mm -hmm. traffic. There was even news, Odiak, who was your staff. He proposed that you buy, and even, I think they had ordered big buses so that you can remove the small ones. What happened? We, that was a plan, that, and it's still the plan, uh, and the plan would be the introduction of what you call BRT, bus uh, rapid uh, transit, yeah, system. Uh, transit yeah, yeah. Uh, system. We are in the construction of nine transport corridors, and I believe you've seen um, some of the investors uh, testing the viability of the workability of the, uh, long of the, of the, the, the long buses, either yeah. the 70, 80 meter buses mm -hmm. or the, uh, the, the, the 70, 80 feet buses or the 100 feet, the ones that carry about 110 people. So that's still very much in order. I mean, the outer ring road is part of that process. Mm -hmm. Gong Road, which has been constructed, is part of the process. The other one will be on uh, Jogo Road, uh, Langata Road, and uh, uh, the overpass on Hur Highway. Right, so um, linked to that, decongesting the city in general and CBD in particular. How would you grade yourself on that? Oh, I haven't done as well. I'll you haven't done as well? I haven't done as well. So what would you give yourself? Oh, I'll give myself five. Five? Yeah. yeah. Quite rather generous. In um, January, I think around 23rd, 24th or 25th January, when you're reshuffling your cabinet, your chief executives. You said you need somebody with, with that kind of, with the kind of influence or knowledge, an engineer to help in the planning and all the rest. Has this worked since you reshuffled the cabinet? Does this, is this what gives you the five? Mm, no, I mean, the, the, the uh, that's not what gives me the five. I think what gives me the five is what we've done in diverting. What have you done? What we've done in diverting heavy vehicles and heavy traffic away from the city. Mm. What's left to do and why haven't you been able to do it? The 
city has about 600,000 vehicles. And in 50 years, we've only been able to construct 600 kilometers uh, of road. We uh, register 10,000 vehicles in Nairobi every month, which makes it 110,000. Uh, so surely, even with the best will in the world, without, uh, without uh, increasing roads, but increasing vehicles, you get, uh, you, you'll get uh, congestion. Uh, we have one of the highest single car occupancies in the world, where 39% um, uh, uh, of the vehicles on our road are occupied by uh, a, single a single person, mainly because there is no alternative public transport system that would allow them to get to where they are going. So, so they why, are to why, 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 is it, why is it there is no proper public transport system where people can park their cars in Ruiru and come to Nairobi and get moving? Why, why can't we have, uh, or even proper taxis that operate like New York? Mind you, the, the, the county government is only four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the county government um, could not have done what should have been done. We can't, wouldn't have, we can't, we couldn't do in four years. Governor, what was not to done be in fifty years? Governor, that you've used um, the four years um, for your Planning. feasibility studies, yes, and then you want another term. To yes, therefore yes, I mean, and uh, you know, that's part of the report that is in the it, it is in the new plan. And probably, let me just let you. Uh, uh, let you in, in, in the management of uh, the roads in Nairobi. Uh, roads in Nairobi are managed by Kenha. The yeah. Highways Authority. Kenya Highways Authority, Kura, Kenya mm. Urban Roads Authority, and uh, the county, the county government. government. And um, uh, the roads that we are talking about, the major ones, uh, belong either to Kenha or to Kura. And the county government uh, has the, the the, the smaller local roads, like the one which passes uh, outside, uh, outside your office. Granted that Kenna and Kuro have done what uh, needs to be done, but there's still need for closer cooperation. That's the reason why you saw there was, uh, the, there was an executive order and there's a bill in Parliament on, um, on uh, the Nairobi Metropolitan uh, Authority. Traffic Authority. Authority. And the Nairobi um, That's from the President, so you welcome it. Oh yeah, I mean we are, part, we are the ones who we are, we are the ones who started because uh, that's uh, uh, governor of Nairobi, governor of Kiambu, governor of uh, Muranga. Muranga, governor of Kajiado, and um, uh, governor of uh, Machakos, and it's this new authority that is going to um, will have the mandate of and of course it's probably 80% of it uh, is uh, Nairobi. The council has been formed, the board has been informed. And it will be the one that will ha will uh, run and manage the the, the, the the mass public transit system, whether it be trail or beat road. And this is the solution to the decongestion. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and everywhere around the world, uh, public mass public transit system is what moves people. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about you know say what London and various other cities do, you know congestion charges, um, you know, high occupancy vehicles, carpooling. Are those sorts of plans things that would work in Nairobi? Oh, but it only works when people have alternatives. Or why would you punish people when you can't give them an alternative? No, you, you talk about uh, developing the uh, bus rapid transit system, yeah. but would you do that um, side, side by side with um, a congestion charge to encourage people absolutely, absolutely. to use the transit Ab system? Absolutely. Right. Um, so, so panelists, bear with, uh, bear with us because there are seven promises. Controlling crime and enhancing security and city planning. Uh, we, uh, when we got in uh, 20, 2013, we were reporting an average of 2,200 to 2,500 uh, um, crimes uh, per month. And uh, we embarked on, um, and Udo, you, you did mention it, the investment on uh, CCTVs, the electronic uh, surveillance system. We have about 49, obviously, the national government had added some more. We passed a law that ensured, uh, as part of the new plan, that uh, all new buildings uh, must have um, electronic uh, surveillance system. Uh, it's also a well-known fact that uh, 
in a, uh, where there's a lot of light, uh, people are a lot less likely to, to commit crimes. We've uh, lit the city, we've increased the number of lights uh, from what was working about 12,000 to now about 50,000. And those two, we've seen that bear fruit uh, in that. Now we are, um, uh, the crimes reported in Nairobi is on the average two to three per day, which makes it about 60 to 70 per month. We, so have, we have seen uh, a big rise in the last few days in cases of crime. Talk of Isili, talk of Dandora, talk of Kayole. Talk of mugging back in the uh, uh, CBD. What would you attribute this to? Of course, I mean, these are, uh, you, you, you're very, very unfortunate. These are, are, uh, are uh, uh, probably people drawn to good life through uh, criminal uh, means. You've seen young men or uh, young people obviously advertising through face, uh, uh, Facebook. Um, I, I think even this morning, I think some um, uh, somebody was uh, was uh, laced in uh, in in uh, in Dandora. Uh, I think our law is very clear that um, uh, they should be in people should be given an opportunity. I know that uh, uh, um, crime uh, when you're attacked is 100% on you. Uh, but uh, police shooting children or people who are perceived uh, to have committed crime, I think it's not right. The law must be followed, they must be arrested, they must be arraigned in courts of law, it must be proven that they are uh, actually, um, actually stolen. So I am completely against uh, the, the, the um, uh, people being shot. On their so country. have you controlled crime? Did yes, we've contributed to, to control of crime, and I give myself eight. Eight. You have contributed. I yeah. like that. So yeah. somebody else has contributed. Who is this somebody else? Uh, national government. The national police have government. done a good job. <coughs> so it's easy for you to work on this with yeah. the national government, yes. but it's not easy with the other pillars. How come? Because of uh, in the level of investment, because of infrastructure investment, we've just talked about uh, roads. I mean, it's, it's expensive, and it requires a long time, mm. and requires planning. Mm. But... Uh, you, when you say you control crime and you don't control the police, how did you expect to control that? Just by lighting? Or be yeah, of course. By if, you, if, you look, if you look at uh, the where those rural areas and where the slums, apart from lighting, there is no access. No, there is no ac there is no movement. Of, even if somebody is sick, you can't get there. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, you, uh, Mutegi, you talked about, uh, you, talk, you, you say the, uh, the, these are the informal segments. That's why, yes. they're, that's why they're informal. They are, not, uh, they are not controlled. But what we've done is uh, through our um, ward and sub-country ad administration, we've gotten, um, we've gotten clusters of, um, clusters of, uh, of, uh, of um, habitations so that, I mean, People know each other, and that's part of what. It's almost pass. like the Nyumba Kumi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's part of what we have in what you call. We pass a law called the neighbor, the 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 the, uh, the, the neighborhoods um, uh, uh, act. Uh, pass a law which gives the the, the residential neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, associations uh, a formal relationship with um, uh, the county government, and it's mandatory that within. Uh, um, a given neighborhood, uh, people <coughs> who move in or move out must be uh, registered by the registered neighborhood uh, association. Yesterday, I mean, I had a meeting, I'm sure you must have seen in the papers with, with the South uh, Sea people. South sea, yes. And uh, it is enabling us and helping and us. And you ordered the de demolition of uh, with illegal structures. All the illegal structures and the possession of, um, of uh, grabbed, uh, grabbed lands. Quite interesting. 800 illegal structures. Were these constructed overnight? Well, no, I mean, this uh, started, uh, started a while, uh, some of them started a while back. So where was Governor Kidero all this time? Why do you wait for somebody to invest their hard-earned money on a structure, illegal or otherwise, then you come and want it demolished within the night? Uh, first of all, it's wrong for you to start building without, uh, without um, uh, approval. Uh, it's wrong to continue building without um, uh, 
uh, it being uh, audited to see that it meets the required standards. That's why approval uh, is required and uh, needed. Uh, and some of them probably is approved. You've, you've approved three floors or four floors which is the maximum you can do in certain given areas, but they are going seven, uh, six or seven fl uh, floors. Uh, we've given the architects, the we've given them the allowance and the structural engineers to be the ones providing and reporting back to City Hall. But in collusion with the developers, probably they do that. And that's why, I mean, uh, when it comes to our notice that they've not complied with mm. Uh, regulations, then we have to come in. So you are punishing an investor because of flaws in your government? No, we are I am sure if you gave me a license to do a three-story building and I do seven stories, I can't do four stories in a split second. Yeah. Where were your officers, your inspectors, when these four stories were coming? Perhaps you're right when it, it gets brought down. And your officer? It's a responsibility on your part. No, you're no, the no. one who's investing. You, will you punish the officer yeah. who was in charge? Of course. Of I mean, uh, can you give us that picture? How many people you've You'll recall when the, houses, uh, when the house went down in Uruma. You remember we had two cases in Uruma where the first one, I think, uh, number about 66 died and the other one we fired. Whose responsibility yes. is it, Governor? Yeah. Who takes the responsibility when there's a failure in a department like that? Uh, because you are looking at 800 possible illegal investors here yeah. who didn't come up overnight. Officers from your government must have colluded or allowed this to happen. Whose responsibility is it? I mean, we've put in investigations in place and where officers, if officers are found not to have performed their duties, they will go home. But as we said, I mean, the, uh, getting, firing somebody in government is not the easiest thing. Destroying or bringing down somebody's hard-earned investment is easier. Uh, illegally, uh, Ill 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 illegal investment uh, breaking the law. Th that house <coughs> at Mbaganzi Road, the one you said that you are going to demolish, belongs to a member of parliament, I think, or performer. Yeah. It, uh, apparently, because it's on a riparian area, it is not the only one. There are many buildings like those all over Nairobi in the riparian areas. Why that one? We gave an enforcement order uh, for it to come down, and uh, the guy quickly went to court. And you have a court order, and we can't disobey the court order, so we are battling it in court uh, my for question, the order to be lifted. My question is, why only that? Because there are many. Yes, like sir. And it's not the only one that we're trying to bring down. I mean, there are mm -hmm. the, the houses in Lovin the, the houses in Lovington, there are houses in Uruma, some, some there are houses them, in Dandora. That, some of them have tenants, and they, they, the people have bought them. They, they are bought and they are occupied. And, not and which comes to one yeah. of the uh, promises you made about the housing. Uh, people in Nairobi, but we have to take a break now and we'll revisit this issue after the break. This is Cheche and we're live on Citizen TV. Today's guest is Nairobi Governor Evans Kidero. Has he kept his promise to Nairobi? Has he made your city better? Has he made your life in Nairobi better? Our SMS number is 22422 or you can tweet us using the hashtag Cheche. <laughs> 